What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be overclocking the all new Raspberry Pi 5 up to 3 gigahertz on the CPU. And we're also going to be overclocking the GPU up to 1 gigahertz or 1000 megahertz. If you're familiar with the new Pi 5, you know we've got an all new SOC. It's a quad core running at 2.4 gigahertz. It's using Cortex A76 cores. And at 2.4, it's definitely the best performing Raspberry Pi they've ever released but we can definitely get a lot more out of it. And through my testing so far, I've been able to get up to three gigahertz on this new SOC. So if you're ready to get started, I'm gonna show you the settings that I used and then we'll jump right into some testing. So it's actually a really simple process to overclock the Raspberry Pi 5, just like it was with the other Raspberry Pis. You can use a Windows PC, Mac, or a Linux machine, or you could do it all on the Raspberry Pi, but we're gonna be using a Mac here. We'll just plug our SD card in, find the boot partition, from here, we're going to find our config.txt. Once we have this, we're going to scroll all the way to the bottom where it says all. And underneath here, we're going to paste in our overclock. So with the Pi that I have here, I did have to take over voltage to three. My arm frequency is 3000 and my GPU frequency is 1000. So this should enable me to get three gigahertz on the CPU one gigahertz on the GPU, and it really depends on the luck of the draw when it comes to this overvoltage. You can go up to eight. I mean, that's a pretty high overvoltage there, but you know, I've been really stable at three. So that's what I'm gonna leave it at. Go ahead and save your changes. Now we can put the SD card back in the Pi 5 and boot it up. Okay, so now that we have that config.txt in place, this Raspberry Pi 5 is overclocked to three gigahertz on the CPU and one gigahertz on the GPU. And I'll tell you what, I mean, it definitely makes a difference. First thing I noticed here was just how snappy it is. And uh, I've installed a few things here just to show you that we are overclocked. We can actually check in a few different areas. I've installed a bunch of applications that I ran some benchmarks on that I wanna test out here. But first things first, Minimum clock, one gigahertz, maximum three. We can also open up terminal and check out NeoFetch. You can see we've got that eight gig Raspberry Pi 5 at three gigahertz listed right here. And finally, we can check directly from terminal, check the max frequency. So yeah, this thing is really overclocked. And initially when I ran this, I didn't think it was, you know, I, I definitely had to check three times myself just to make sure we were really getting up to three gigahertz, but it's definitely a lot snappier. The first thing I wanted to show off here was some 1080p playback from YouTube. Now, even at 1080 60, we'll still get some drop frames and I'll show you that in a second. But the first thing we're going to go with here is this 1080p 24 FPS movie from Blender. And we're definitely going to go full screen with it. Make sure we're at 1080, stats for nerds. And on the initial load in, we had a few drop frames. This is totally normal. Even on my high-end gaming rig, I get drop frames when I load into a video. But throughout, this will not drop any more frames, which is really awesome. But we're only at 24 FPS. And a lot of people want to see some 1080p 60 playback. But I'll just buffer ahead a bit here to show you that, you know, it won't even kind of fall on its face if we need to buffer a little bit here. So that's awesome. And, you know, watching movies at 24 FPS or even 30 on the Pi 5 here, especially with the overclock, is going to work out really well. Next thing we've got to take a look at is some 1080p 60 playback. And again, I do want to mention, yeah, it's going to drop some frames. Unfortunately, that's just how the Pi is. But with kind of our go-to test here, Big Buck Bunny. We're at 1080, it's a 60 FPS video. Checking out those drop frames, this is nothing compared to the Raspberry Pi 4 or even the Pi 5 with no overclock. With no overclock, when I hit about 2000 frames, we had about 250 drop frames. And I'll just let this play through a little bit. You'll see we're right there under 40. And by about 2400, we're at 40 drop frames, which really isn't that bad compared to no overclock at all. This is actually really smooth. The next thing I did was run a few benchmarks, and I also threw the Raspberry Pi 4 in here. So for 7-zip decompression, higher is going to be better. Pi 4, 7,489. Stock Raspberry Pi 5, 13,423. And the Pi 5 with the 3 gigahertz overclock on the CPU, 16,389. Multi-thread Sysbench, Pi 4, 7,116. 
Pi 5 with no overclock, 10,573. And with that 3 gigahertz overclock, we're at 13,715. The Speedometer browser benchmark is another one I tested. Pi 4, 27.8. Pi 5, 64.1. And with that 3 gigahertz overclock, we got a nice little boost up to 74.3. And the final one I tested here was Geekbench 5. So at the very top, we've got the overclock Pi 5. Single core, 724. Multi, 1709. Stock Pi 5 on single core, 612. Multi, 1617. And you can see at the very bottom, we've also got the Raspberry Pi 4 coming in with a single core of 239 and 711 multi. So yeah, in terms of synthetic performance with this overclock, it's looking really awesome. But let's get into some real world stuff. Now, I've got more that I want to test here. And the first thing's just going to be Minecraft. I did install the Bedrock version, but I can't get it to launch. We're just going with the modified Pi version, which does offer a little more. Very smooth experience, and I will admit, I didn't test this on the stock Raspberry Pi 5. I just went through with the overclock version, but yeah, I mean, we're definitely at 60 FPS. This is really smooth. And of course, I wanted to show you the emulation performance increase here with this overclock. So in my original video, we did test out a few things. I also made a little bit of an emulation video. We tested out some Dreamcast, some PSP, some N64. And Dreamcast ran great at the native resolution, but now we're actually going to take the resolution up on this and then we'll move over to some PSP because that's where the big improvement is. And for Dreamcast, I am using the standalone version of ReDream. Okay, so from the very top, we'll go to our video section. I can upscale to 1920 by 1440 with this overclock. And before, you know, with the harder to emulate games like DOA, we were at the native resolution, and even with that, we did have a lot of frame skip going on. It's still turned on, but we're able to take the resolution way up now. I also went through and tested Sonic Adventure 2 at 1920 by 1440. We had a steady 60 FPS, and the frame counters up in the top left-hand corner. If you've tried this game on lower-end ARM chips, you know how hard it can be to emulate, even with this awesome emulator Redream. But now, with the overclock on the Raspberry Pi 5, we can really take that resolution up, and it definitely makes a huge difference in visual quality. And the last thing I wanted to show off here was some PSP emulation. I'm using the standalone version of PPSSPP, and in my initial video, we did test out Chains of Olympus. This is definitely a harder one to emulate, especially on the Raspberry Pis. And at 1x resolution with the OpenGL backend, because that's all I have access to right now with this version of PPSSPP, it ran pretty decently, but when there were a lot of characters on screen, it would dip down into the mid-50s. Let me go full screen with this. But with this overclock, I think we're pretty much good with Chains of Olympus at 1x. Another thing I monitored through all of my tests were CPU temps. And remember, I've got that uh, Active Pi cooler. So this is the official Raspberry Pi 5 Active Cooler from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. And at idle, 47 degrees Celsius was the highest temperature I saw, 3 watts. But while maxed out, it did jump up to 76 degrees Celsius, which is way under thermal throttle anyway, and was pulling close to 11 watts at 3 gigahertz. So far, overclocking the Pi 5 to 3 gigahertz has been a really awesome experience. I mean, we're definitely seeing a nice bump in single and multi-core performance. Not to mention, we also overclocked the GPU, and I've got a little more to work on here. There's a lot more that I want to test, and I will have a couple more videos coming. It's still a bit early, but as you saw in this video, yeah, it is possible to overclock the Raspberry Pi 5 to 3 gigahertz. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. I really appreciate you watching. If there's anything else you want to see tested on the Raspberry Pi 5, definitely let me know down below. I will have more videos coming. And like always, 
Thanks for watching.